What is going on? Melissa here. So, um, I've got the home to myself tonight. Yay for me. Yay. Um, I was going to go out and door dash, but I'm like, no, I think I'm going to spend my time um, doing some stuff I want tonight. So, I already had been, I gave plasma today. Um, don't know if you can see it. A little mark on my arm. That was from the poke. So I had given a uh, plasma, and I have a prop here. I want to talk to you all about this is my sweater. Okay, my blue sweater. I've worn this before on here. Nice thick sweater goes up to my neck. Pretty modest, right? So um, I got a story behind this. Okay, that's why I'm showing you this. So, oh boy. So let me see. I gave plasma today, and I read. A book which was really good I'll probably do do a book review on it it's really good um, I'm still reading it but when I'm done yeah I might think of doing do that doing that I can't talk tonight so anyways um, you can tell I get distracted a lot right I'm always moving always doing something so I had an interview today and this was a sit-down job and I met the couple and the, because there are people out there who do sit down jobs, they are, they are very, very, very overweight, right? Because they do the sit down jobs. And I'm not talking about your average 20, 50 pounds. I'm talking about a lot of weight, right? So um, not a problem, not a problem. You live your life, I live my life, we're all happy. So. I went in and as I met this couple, um, they, you know, they had weight issues and it was obvious and I'm not going to be rude and say something, right? Because it's not my place. So, um, as I'm sitting there and we're talking about this job and I said, well, what are the hours, you know? And they're like, well, these are the hours. And I'm like, well, rather than eight hours at a desk, I'd rather do six hours. And they're like, yeah, that's, you know, that's probably doable. I'm like, I have my son I pick up, I drop him off, kind of, you know, what I wanted. And so um, we got talking and I was honest. And I said, you know, something along the lines is I tend to be pretty hyper. So I am. I'm just, that's the way I've always been made. I used to play outside as a kid. I used to, you know, run around, pogo stick, roller skate bow and arrow shoots, fishing, um, my dad took me hunting once, um, you know, snowmobiling, um, ice skating, you name it. I have always been very outdoorsy, very physical. I love to dance. I, I used to dance, basketball, soccer, cheerleading, always busy. So that's something that I've seen in my work area that, you know, I really like to do is be physically busy with my waitressing but yet I had shared I homeschooled um so they're like well the concern I have is that you are hyper and you probably can't do a sit-down job and I'm like no I actually can I'm like you know when I was homeschooling especially with my older teens I would be over here da 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 da, da talking to them while nursing a baby and while holding you know the other baby so, or the little ones. So I'm like, you know, I know what it's like to sit down. In fact, I feel like I have sat down a little bit too much lately. And I have shared, you know, that I gained a little more weight than I wanted to lately. And I haven't been walking. I have a vehicle now. I haven't been walking like I was over here. So, um, so they're like, well, you know, thanks for addressing that. And I'm like, you know, I, I can do it. I mean, I've done sit-down jobs before. I've homeschooled. I had to pass a real estate class, et cetera, et cetera. So I defended myself. And I just thought after how weird to not, how petty to think just because someone's personality is somebody, you know, who is hyper may not be able to sit down and do a job. I never heard of such a thing in my life. And 
you know, I said, no, I'm just talking about that work-life balance. You know, there is a balance. There's a balance between exercise and there's a balance between sitting down and doing mind work, right? And I had shared, you know, I took a, I took a class on stocks. I took a real estate class. I did, you know, I'm very capable of sitting down. I mean, it's easier to sit down, I think, in many ways than to run around and work hard. So, um... They may not hire me because I might be too hyper. And I have never heard of such a thing in my life. So I um, don't want to say I felt discriminated against, but in a way, yeah, kind of. Um, and I brought up, I bring up the weight because I didn't go up to them and be like, well, you know, I think you're too fat for this job. I think you need to get outside and balance your life out and get some exercise. I didn't say that, right? And most people already know if they have an office job, they need to balance their life out and get out and get some exercise because it's just not healthy. Not to pick on someone, but it's not healthy. So, um, so yeah. And then they said, you know, they'll get back to me, da-da-da. And I just, you know, there was that. And then the sweater I'm talking about, I hadn't prepared for an interview, okay, because they just said, can we call you tomorrow? And then last minute, they're like, can you come in for an interview? So I had the sweater on. So I was dressed pretty modest. I had my stinking uh, sneakers on because I was just given plasma. So I'm talking to them, and I'm going like this. This is how I talk, right? I talk with my hands because I've got, like, Heinz 57, part Italian in me, just I'm very expressive, very outspoken and expressive at times. So she's looking at my hand each time I'm talking like there's something wrong with my me using my hand. I, you know, I had a situation, and this is so weird today, where me and one of my girlfriends were talking about how women can be pegged way too much for the way they dress and the way they act and the way they behave. So we were talking about this and I said, you know, I had a pastor who actually told me I should watch where I put my hands when I talk. And I'm like, this is how I talk. So um, I can understand the guy's point of view, like right now, you know, my hands in front of my chest. But at the same time, to be judging people like that and being like, oh, because she talks with her hands, she's drawing attention to her chest. That's not the intent for me that's not who I am it's not my personality it's not oh look at my chest I'm not like that right I'm not like oh let me move my hands to my chest so you can imagine certain things so it was so strange today because me and like I said a friend of mine was just like you know this is the stuff we have we have had to put up with in church we both were in a confidential setting saying this is what I had to put up with and I'm like this is what I had to put up with and so, um, I think after that, I think after those two comments, you know, well, one with the eyes, I mean, she kept looking at my hands, probably because her husband was with me. And after the comment about being too hyper, I think I'm going to pass because I think even if it's offered, it wasn't offered yet, but I'm like, how petty can you be? You know, and I was honest about it. I'm like, geez, you know, I said I'm hyper. And I think most people would take that as a positive. Like, oh, if she's hyper, she's going to be able to get the work done. And it's a job that it's nonstop all day on the desk. And I would be getting trained. And some of that training is pay, paid for. So that was good. But, I mean, I took a real estate class. And I've waitressed, you know, waitressing you work all day long. And you don't really you know, have much of a break sometimes. So you need that energy and you need that hyperness to get your work done. And so I just couldn't see, I couldn't see eye to eye with them on that. I just couldn't be like, what do you mean I'm too hyper? You know, you you just said you need somebody who's going to wow the customers, someone who is pretty strong and positive and energetic and now you're saying I may be too hyper. So I have never, ever dealt with this in my life. I think it's a very um, limited way to think about somebody. So I thought, nope, you're already having an issue and you're not even hired. 
so don't even bother. So I'm letting that that one go, whether I get it or not. They said they'd let me know next week, and I'm moving forward with something else. So what I'm trying to say is don't let others, you know, put you in a box, even in your work, you know. Don't let them, you know, put you, no matter where you are, in a church or whatever. I mean, I've had to defend myself quite a bit in churches and say, actually, no, this is what I think. Or I've had to, like I wore red heels with my husband once and I got the look. And I'm like, too bad, you know. Or I've had to say to a pastor, you know, when he has said something, I've, I've had to say, I don't agree with you. And he would be like, what do you mean you don't agree? And I'm like, I don't agree with you. You know, you're not my Holy Spirit, basically. Um, and then for him to say, well, I have, you know, I have something to tell you, but you probably won't agree you probably wouldn't agree in a way like that. I said, you bet it. You bet you're right. I'm not going to agree with you. You got it, you know? So, um, I mean, everything's fine now. There's a love for this pastor, but, you know, you've got to be able to stand your ground. And, you know, I had, someone had said once, oh, you're probably brainwashed going to church. And I had said, I don't think, I, I had thought about this later and said, you know, you really can't brainwash me. I am so stubborn-minded and so, um, as my husband's non-attorney would say, difficult. He says I'm difficult because I don't agree with the divorce. So I am so stubborn when I think that I have my own convictions and my way of thinking that I will not let someone brainwash me. So that's a good way to be. I mean, it's really a good way to be as far as not being brainwashed by someone or someone who has some kind of spiritual authority to think that they can tell you what you ought to do. So make sure you can think for yourself. That's, I guess, one of the biggest things I would say in life is think for yourself. And even now, you know, as different jobs, I've gone through like a bad string of jobs. I've had you know, different opportunities. I've had pettiness. I've had this and that. I'm looking at jobs and I'm saying, what needs to change? You know, what needs to change here? And as we, you know, as I I tend to be somebody who is changing all the time and growing, you want to be that way. So I'm like, okay, what do I want to do with my life? What, how do I want to design my life? I designed my life when I homeschooled. You know, I did what I wanted with my kids and I'm like now how do you want to design your life with your work so I'm really considering um, a lot and reading more about jobs to really understand the market and I know one thing it's not all about the dollar bill we say time is money it's actually time is your life time is your life and you better know what you want in your life so you don't waste your time on dead-end jobs. So that's what I got for now, guys. Thanks for joining me.